All right, I'm going to do some object drawing, and um, I'm going to work on a fairly interesting bottle. It involves about five or six subforms in various interesting ways. So let's get right to it. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, for a central vertical axis, I'm actually going to use a guide. Um, and whenever you're doing digital work, if you have a guide, the tendency is for the layer to want to snap to the guide. So um, what you do is uh, turn off snap to the guide. That way, when you draw across it or near it, it's not going to mess anything up. So what I want to do is just kind of start drawing. And then I'll get a measurement together after that. And I could use horizontal guides if I wanted, but I kind of prefer to do my own rough estimation. And when I work with a, a bottle that kind of has a narrow lip, like a wine bottle or a beer bottle or something like that, um, I tend to want to bring the central cylinder all the way down from top to bottom. I find that that works pretty well as a way to go about um, beginning because typically these bottles made are made to stack on top of each other. So um, that kind of helps a good bit. Um, because usually there's some kind of bottom structure at the bottom that reflects the structure at the top. Um, now, if I measure out the bottle, um, do some sighting and measuring, um, basically the top section of the bottle is going to be um, like one and two thirds longer than here. So I can kind of take this distance bring it down and I might have to shorten the bottle um, normally I put the, the checking and measuring stage a little bit later but with this one I want to kind of start early for it um, it's got a little immediate lip to the bottle up at the top And then the bottle kind of swells out to about here. So to gather that swell, I think I'm going to go with a um, cone shape. The swell ends about here, below the lip a little bit, a little bit below the mouth. Does something like that, and then the swell kind of rounds very, very quickly, a little bit below where I put that initial ellipse relative to what I'm doing here. So, one of the concepts that I use is, is um, it's called bracketing. Whatever you do to one side of the object, you can just go back and do it to the other, so you can get um, symmetry a little bit faster that way. And even here, I can go back and check myself by pulling up some uh, verticals. Um, and I can make sure that the negative uh, shapes on both sides are similar to each other. Um, at this stage, it doesn't matter too much. If, um, if overall I'm kind of unhappy with that, I can kind of start to narrow in the structure a little bit. Move it together. What I'm looking for here is kind of an approximation of the object, not necessarily the exact perfect thing. Um, then the next kind of component form is a fairly large um, 
almost three times the uh, initial width of the bottle. A fairly large kind of um, half sphere. Whenever you're dealing with like a half sphere in terms of uh, structure, I recommend going ahead and drawing the entire thing. Spheres are tricky. Um, I find mine always look messy at first and then I can kind of come back and clean them up later. Um, and then where the sphere ends, I like to, and begin kind of becoming more cylindrical, I like to put a, a hemisphere around that little ellipse. And now here the bottle is going to come down and it's going to be a little narrower than this. So what I want to do is bring these, drop these verticals down on the edge of the sphere and make sure that I'm kind of coming within that guideline for the cylinder at the bottom, just a little bit. There we go. And if I've done it right, I should kind of have a little bit of a conical feel to it. So, um, all things told, in comparison, this has kind of gotten a little bit more squat than my actual reference, um, and that's okay. Um, what I like to do here is to um, remember that even though I don't didn't nail the proportions of this bottle, my goal is learning, and when I draw through this process, I'm always learning. Um, and here I've learned um, like what my main component forms are, that I have um, a kind of main so uh, a main like conical form upside down right here. I've got a spherical form here. I've got two more cones here and here with a cylinder. And um, so what I can do from here is use these observations and um, make adjustments next to it. So I'll just go over here next to it and say, I know that this bottle needs to be significant, significantly taller and relatively narrower to the height. Again, I can use another guide just because I'm working digitally, that's kind of fun. If you're not working digitally, what I do is I um, measure right along the edge of the paper and use the edge of the paper as my guideline. So I'm just going to bring the cylinder down really far. I don't know where the cylinder is going to end yet, but that doesn't mean that I can't um, bring it down further than I think that I need it. And on these initial stages, remember, you're just refining. Or you're not refining it, you're just approximating. So I think it's OK to, to make a guess and then change it later. Um, I think that's healthy and normal in terms of a, a procedural approach to drawing. Um, the bend, I think, kind of happens here. And then we go out. Um, in a conical way about here, I think. So I'll make my larger conical ellipse here. Um, and I'll make it a little, overall a little smaller. Maybe end it like there. And I kind of give myself tick marks to work with all the time. Um, like little points to hit. It works for me. You don't have to do it that way, but I like it because um, sometimes I find it's easier just to connect the dots. And then this thing relatively quickly in comparison swells down, comes back to its normal shape here. Again, I can pull verticals on the outside and I can judge negative shape and make sure that I've hit the negative shape correctly. Um, 
now I've got my spherical form it kind of goes above this ellipse because I'm kind of looking down on it and I think it's going about here So even though I'm only using half of the sphere, I'm drawing the whole thing. And then I can check the distance here across. Make sure that it's relatively symmetrical. And I can do this on the screen with my uh, stylus. And you can do that with a pencil if you're working um, with analog media. Then I'm going to, of course, go through and cut that off focusing on only the hemisphere that I want the actual drawing which is the top hemisphere and then I'm going to go ahead and pull a cylinder down and then if I need to measure I can measure the width of that uh, sphere versus the height of that bottom section um, if I measure it out sighting wise basically from where the sphere begins it's one, two, like two and a quarter spheres to the bottom from the beginning of the sphere. So I can measure that out. I have one sphere, two and a quarter. So it's like maybe here where the bottle is going to end. Um, so that's a good guess. So what I can do is put out my horizontal. I can put a couple of tick marks inside so that I kind of get the, the conical nature of it going. Put my base in, connect the dots, and then I can judge how successful I've been. Um, and I think I, I think I needed to um, extend this down even further, just a little bit more, not too much. I can repeat that ellipse and bring it down. So I think I'm approaching something that's a little bit more accurate. And actually this internal ellipse, um, the first one that I did, is actually going to work for my drawing because the inside of the structure has, um, the glass has thickness. so. I can actually use that um, as the basis for the some of the internal structure within the within it, um, and then within it there's actually a little cone, sort of like a wine glass that's kind of uh, probably because of the pressure, um, and that cone is going to go up just slightly and kind of round out, and create this little mound inside the actual glass. So here what I've done is I've kind of done an analysis of all the component forms within this object. Um, there's some stamp labeling and, and some details that I could do. Um, but at this point I consider this form like analyzed. Um, I know what, what all the structures are. I know what the proportions are. I've checked uh, positive and negative shapes. I can continue to check positive and negative shapes if I bring uh, outer tangent lines all the way up. Um, I find that if I'm dividing into subforms and using all the tools at my disposal, that the positive and negative shapes are just kind of a double check. I don't have to do those first. Um, if I had a second layer, what I can do is um, uh, take the first layer. Um, if you're drawing softly with a pencil. You don't have to do this, but digitally sometimes it gets a little heavy. You can change the opacity down a little bit and then draw on top of it to refine. Um, so say I set this opacity to like 65%. Um, gets a little bit faint. I can still see it. And then on my top layer, I can get real refined with it. So I can pick the exact ellipse that I want. Bring that down. Um, 
If you're not going to draw the whole ellipse, what I recommend is starting from behind a little bit and emphasizing the front, but rounding it out from the back. Um, I think that's really important. So that you don't create the almond-like uh, pointy ellipses. That's kind of a big no-no for structural drawing. And then I do probably want to preserve like a faint transition um, because there is some like distortion change and value change through the layers. And here what I can do when I get to this um, this conic section is um, I can round this out instead of having it be uh, very linear and straight. And what I want to do is work back and forth and kind of be sure that as I do round that out that it's fairly symmetrical. You know, nobody's perfect. It doesn't have to be like exact, but as good as you can get it, you know. Um, and here uh, I'm working on the transition down to the bottle, right? The um, a connection of the bottle, you can kind of see um, the connection from the, the main part of the bottle to the actual like stem, you can kind of see that the um, ellipse kind of sits on top of the of the spherical form, and that spherical form kind of goes uh, behind, you know, there's some overlapping going on. So I want to be sure that I create that connection um, in a dimensional and overlapped way rather than in a way that's two-dimensional, flat, and one shape overlapping another. Overlapping forms are really powerful, I think. So here I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. And yes, right here I'm using, I'm kind of focusing on contour. Um, but at this point I've laid out the structure so I can afford to do, I can afford to, to work on the contour and get the actual outer shape going. Um, because I think the inner shapes are still kind of visible. And drawing through forms I find to be incredibly, it's just an incredibly powerful method because you're able to understand so much more about an object. Okay, and then if I turn off my original layer, I'm kind of left with uh, a ghostly, sort of strange object. Um, and right here, this example is why I don't like to erase, right? I feel like showing the work, the fullness of what it took to get to that object, tells you more than the cleaned up line work on its own. Um, it makes a little bit more visual sense. Um, from here, um, I can actually continue to refine um, if I want. I can still move stuff around. Like, um, let's say I want to move the bottle, the connection to the to the bottle down a little bit. I can do that. I can have a little bit heavier uh, lines there. It's okay. I can kind of make sure that pinch gets expressed. And then if there's any kind of asymmetry, I can still address that. I can pick the more correct lines. Um, but at any rate, I consider this pretty much done in terms of, um, and I would call this a complex object because you do have uh, like five component forms that are that are all orchestrating together to create this bottle. Um, 
it's definitely not a simple object because it's you know got more than three so um, one of the nice things about doing it this way too is that um, you have the ability to make a complex object simple and that works by just tackling each component by itself and then uh, orchestrating them all together.